before I get into the word, but I'm sitting here, the Spirit of the Lord said, do not allow fear mm -hmm. to hinder you from testifying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because whatever you're dealing with and you face with and God brought you out, somebody in here need to hear it. Because somebody is praying and you holding on the answer. The moment you testify, it brings instant deliverance to your brother or sister. Amen. Amen. And I speak prophetically to you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Fear do not belong to you. Amen. Fear is the enemy. Fear is something that belongs under your feet. Amen. You're victorious. Yes, You're not a failure. You're more than a conqueror. Amen. 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 But before I get into the word, can we just give God some praise? Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He's a king. He's a great king. He chose you. You're not a mistake. He empowers you. He put his anointing upon your life. I don't care what your past looked like. I don't care if you was raped, molested. I don't care if you sold dope. I don't care if you was married. You was a murderer. God chose you. He chose Saul, didn't he? God have no respect to person. You are a man and a woman of great purpose. Hallelujah. And God is calling you to a deeper place. And God, this is your fine hour. This is a great hour, a major breakthrough for your life. Amen. From this night forward, this night forward, when as we get into this word, God is going to bring your life out of this bondage, that mm. snare. Hallelujah. The thing you've been calling on God about, that mountain, according to Zechariah 4 and 6, said, your mountain shall become a plain. You look up the word plain, it means flat land. In other words, the wars that you've been facing, the things you've been dealing with, God himself is going to step in it Yellow. and crush it Amen. for the glory of God. Amen. Even as we testify, even as we get into this word, angelic beings have been released to fight this demonic war Amen. for you. Amen. 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 You're mugging the conqueror. I don't care. I don't care. You don't have to worry about your son. When you pray, it releases angels. Angels are walking side by side your children. Isaiah, oh my God, we're going to get into the word, but Isaiah is a prophetic book, and he spoke prophetic. He's known as a major prophet. He foresaw the coming or the, the, the uh, transition that Jesus would go through, the suffering he would go through for us. And I'm here to tell you to encourage you. You are a prophetic person. Yes. When God said, let there be light, he saw us sitting here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why, according to David, the 23rd Psalm, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. When you study a shepherd, he always goes before the sheep to protect you. Yeah. There is a supernatural protection in this room. You're never alone. Amen. Yeah. I don't care what the exterior look like. We're in the supernatural. We're three. There are three part beings. With three part beings, there are three realms. We have the natural realm, the soulless realm, even the spirit realm. The natural realm is I'm looking at you sitting there. The soulless realm is your five senses. The spirit realm is where God dwells and the angels dwell. And the enemy always fights you in the emotional realm. That's why it's important before you come to church, you get in praise so you can relax. Amen. Yeah. A sheep will never be able to drink water that's moving. They choke him. Get the revelation. When you have peace, you receive the word better. Amen. 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 So we're going to get into the book of Jeremiah. Well, God has given me the book of Jeremiah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about Impact Bible. I love this church. I love my brothers and sisters. Um, I'm constantly interceding for you. Um, I'm just excited. Jeremiah is known as a major prophet. He was known as a weeping prophet. The Jews was always in a, but they were in a backsliding condition. Hallelujah. But as we get into the text, we're going to see um, even himself ended up in exile. Hallelujah, Jesus. But even um, here in the, the, we're going to go to the 29th chapter, verses 10 through 14. I am a teacher. Hallelujah, other word. I believe in looking up words, breaking it down. I love searching um, the background. God, what are they talking about? How can I make it applicable to my life today? And um, also, too, I thank God for Pastor Nick. I was laying across the bed. I was going to write and do my testimony. The Spirit, <laughs> Pastor Nick said, Antonio, can you preach? I said, yeah, okay. So I jumped up here. I got my stuff together. Thank God I had some clothes already, already um on hangers. My attention was to wear some jeans because I'm going to mellow out with a certain tie because I'm ready to go out in the street and witness. Yes. I'm ready to put my jeans on and put my t-shirt. I'm ready to get out in the streets. I love it. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 11. When you have it, say man, please. Amen. Amen. And it reads, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace. God ain't mad at you. I don't care what you did before you got here. I don't care if you messed up. The moment you repent, you're back in right standing with God. God said, my thoughts I think about you, I'm at peace. I'm not angry. We actually have believers out here thinking God is actually angry and mad at them. God said, hallelujah, Jesus. They're not evil to give you an expected end. The word expected end means bright future. God said, when I think about you, I think about you have this glorious future. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Verse 12. Then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. That's good news itself. Yeah, the word call means to invite. God said, you shall, you shall pray. God said, I'm going to listen. I'm going to hear you. I'm listening. What's your request? The Bible said, let your request made known to, unto God. Hallelujah. The scripture also says, pray without ceasing. God says, I'm listening. And this one, I can't remember uh, exactly what the book is. He said, but why are you yet speaking? I will hear. Yeah. God is listening. He wants the communication. And he's just not um, a mono. He's dial. When you speak to him, he will respond. Amen. He gave me this message about two, matter of fact, to be exact, two, two nights ago. I was up, I'm usually up three or four o'clock in the morning. That's when I spend a lot of my prayer time. And God began to drop this word in my spirit. And I was blown away. I put it on Facebook and I'm getting so many hits on Facebook. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, prayer. Prayer is vital in our lives. Amen. You must to communicate with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. 13. And you shall seek me, and you shall find me. And when you search for me, with all your heart. Here we go. Verse 14. And I will be fond of you, found of you, said the Lord. In other words, God says, not only am I going to pay attention, but I take delight in you talking to me. Hello. That relationship. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, and I will turn away the captivity. Here we go. Prayer turns around captivity. Captivity means bondage, you're in prison, or you're in handcuffs. Hallelujah, Jesus. When Peter, when Peter, according to the book of Acts, Peter was in prison, and, and the church were in a seat, and they was having prayer. And what happened? Get this. Watch this. When they were praying, what did he do? It released an angel. He tapped Peter and opened up the prison doors. Right. Get the revelation. When you pray, whatever you're praying about, it's going to release the angel. It's going to bring that blessing out of captivity. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. I'm going to tell you something. I know this to be true. Hallelujah. I got a daddy that's been messed up on heroin for years. All his friends died from heroin. I began to intercede and pray. And just like God said, I will be fond of you. He was paying attention to what I said. I began to intercede for my father. My father's still alive today. And God is Hallelujah. constantly weaning him off heroin. Amen. According to, st to statistics, they said my father probably been dead a long time ago. Mm -hmm. When you stand in the gap, when you pray, it re release angels. Demonic spirits can't come kill your loved one. Amen. Amen. And you worry for Amen. no reason. Amen. You don't have to worry no more. Hallelujah, Jesus. My dad is still alive. Amen. Glory to God. I got a brother that's not saved, still selling drugs. Hallelujah. I begin to intercede and pray, asking God to deliver him and protect him. My brother, some guys was out to my brother. I begin to intercede. Some guys had a gun so powerful, they saw my brother going to the party store with his friend. The gun was so powerful, it went through the bricks, the plexiglass, and killed the guy in front of him, and the body fell on top of my brother. Do I rejoice that the young man lost his life? No, I don't. What I'm saying is, no matter where your loved one is, when you speak the word, the angels are going to go and Amen. protect your loved one. Amen. Amen. Angels are on the assignment. Yes. God is bringing our lives out of this captivity. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I sense worry. A lot of you have been worried about your loved ones, worried about sons and daughters. Hallelujah. No, when we pray, angelic beings begin Amen. to move. Amen. Psalms 130, 103 said that the angels hearken to his voice. Uh -huh. When you speak the word of God, angels are waiting for you to give him assignment. Uh -huh. Amen. Come on now. You're powerful. You don't have to put up with this confusion. Hallelujah. You are an ambassador. God put you here to represent him in the earth. You speak for him. You speak this word, and the word is going to fulfill itself. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 14. And I will gather you from all nations. And from all places, whether I have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring again, uh, I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away to captivity. In other words, God says, you once was in a prosperous place. You got, to, you got comfortable, you started backsliding, you started sinning. But God said, because you repent, I'm going to put you back in a wealthy place. And God is saying to everybody here, God is restoring your life back into that wealthy place. You're going to begin to see breakthroughs like never before. But the first breakthrough is going to happen is in your spirit. Your joy is going to become greater. Your peace is going to become greater. Your family is going to become greater. You're the fire starter. You're going to set the pace for your loved ones. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. I don't care if it's a mortgage situation. God said, I'm bringing you out the bondage. Amen. I'm bringing you out. Amen. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. I turn it wherever, so ever will. Yes. I don't care what position man in. I have a, I, God's power is so strong, he can switch the decision of a person instantly. Amen. Why? Because we have the favor of God upon your life. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. 
I'm telling you, I don't care how much money you have and you don't have. That favor show up, it's going to be released. Amen. So God said, I'm turning my people's life around. Hallelujah. Been praying for loved ones for years. Hallelujah. God is turning your finances around, your health around. Hallelujah, Jesus. Other exile or bondage situations in your life. God said, I'm turning it around right now Amen. as the word go forth. Let's go to Psalms 126. Hallelujah, Jesus. No more tears. God says, turn it around. Psalms 126. Let me know when you're there. I'm patient. We there? Yeah. Psalms 126. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, Zion is the church. Captivity is bondage. Captivity is exile. God says, said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. When God bring you out of bondage, it's like a dream. Amen. It's so unreal. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You literally be saying to yourself, it's a great feeling, but you're like, God, I can't believe you finally did this thing. I've been praying about this stuff for years. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You've done it. God said, this is what's happening right now. Right now. This word is in, in, it bursts in the spirit realm, then it manifests in the natural realm. Amen. The moment we leave out this church, things are supposed to start manifesting. Amen. Supernatural. Because when the word is preached, signs are supposed to follow. Amen. They're supposed to start manifesting. Yes. I don't care if somebody got a loved one going up for a prison sentence. God said, I'm going to bring that situation out of bondage. The world would try to lock a person up for years, give a person a year just to break the person's heart to get them to answer the call of God. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Two, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Unsaved people are going to see your life and say, that was nobody but God to bless them Amen. like that. Amen. Unsaved people got discernment and tell if God done this thing for you or not. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. I love it. He said, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. You know you have a great attitude when God bless you. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. You want to make a person feel good? Give them some money. Yeah. It's a liberty to come on the inside. You be like, Lord, you be singing songs you ain't sung in years. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. But that's what breakthrough happens. Amen. Hallelujah. You feel great inside. You feel better. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel healing in this room. I feel a healing. God's going forth in here. I feel the healing anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Three. The Lord has done great things for us. See, that's corporate testimony. Hallelujah, Jesus. We can all testify about that right now. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, we're glad. Four, turn again our captivity, which is bondage, O Lord, as streams in the south. Five, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. You have cried long enough. It's reaping season now. Amen. Joy is coming. Nehemiah 18 said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah, Jesus. The scripture said, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. It's time to rejoice, men and women of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Six, he that go forth weeping, bearing precious seed, your time, your talent, and your gift, shall doubtless come again rejoicing. That word doubtless saying, what God is saying, no doubt about it. You sold your money, it's coming back. You sold time, you sold joy in somebody, it's coming back. Whatever you sold, send out, and you sold a good seed, it's coming back. Watch this. He said, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. God says, you sold your finances. Sheaves mean abundance. It means breakthrough. God says, I'm bringing your life out of, out of bondage. I'm bringing it out of captivity. But I, when I, because you sold your seed, it's time for the harvest to come into your life. Sheaves mean breakthrough and harvest. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is turning your life around right now Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.